Okay, I'm going to go over transposing this phrase from Rondo into saxophone quintet. And the method is basically the same as what we did for brass quintet, which is, um, in fact, I'll bring that up right now, I think. When you have a trumpet in B flat, then when the trumpet plays and sees its own C, then it sounds like a B flat just below it or a whole step down. So in order to write for trumpets in B flat, you have to take the key signature and the notes up a whole step. So this was in the key of F major and trumpets will be written in the key of G so that when they play their notes, it comes out and sounds a whole step lower. And so you can see that change the key signature and I've just written all these up a line, okay? Horn and F means that when the horn sees and plays the note C right there, that it comes out sounding like an F, a perfect fifth below. So we have to write everything up a perfect fifth. So the key signature was F up a perfect fifth is C. And this top line in the bass clef, middle C, will go up to the G right there. And horns read usually, for the most part, in uh, treble clef, and so there's my G. So when they see this and play this, it will sound a fifth lower, middle C, which is that line right there. And then the trombones and the, trum and the tuba, they are actually just at pitch concert instruments meaning that you can just leave the key signature as is, put this there, and then put that there and follow it across. And that's how we did the brass quintet. Now, the saxophone quintet are just other transposing instruments. And they don't write it here for some reason, but uh, you'll see it in other uh, publishing things where else is E flat alto sax and B flat tenor sax and E flat baritone sax. And, it's basically the same thing. So what that means is that when a saxophone sees this note right there, it's actually, when it plays it, sounding like the E flat. Oops, I guess that's already flat because the key signature. That's what it will sound like right there, okay? Now, what that means is this is a major six, from here down to here. So we're gonna to have to take all the notes in this top line right here for alto sax number one and the key signature and take it up a major sixth. So uh, the other thing I did just for fun because um, we wanted to start looking at minor keys is I took and changed this from being F major, the major mode into F minor. So F minor has four flats, like the key of A flat major, but F is still do or note number one, the tonic note the quality of the chords changes because F A flat C will become F minor, B flat, D flat, again from there, will become minor. The C chord stays major because we use the harmonic minor scale, which raises the seventh note of the scale back up to being leading tone or half step below the tonic note, the F right there. So that's what that is. And it sounds really cool. Um, if you have listened to the audio. Etc. right? But let's talk about transposition. So what that means is that in order for this to play notes that it sees and have them come out like the A flat and the G and the F, they're all gonna be a sixth higher. Now, the way we would do that is we would say the key of F up a major six is the key of D minor, and D minor is one flat B flat. So we would get rid of these flats here and just leave one B flat. And D would be the new F and it would be above, right? Now the computer does this for us automatically. So when I change the document view to display in concert pitch away, now it's transposed so you can see that it said, oh, well, transpose would need to be in the key of one flat. Uh, a trick for this is E flat instruments get rid of three 
accidentals or three, they add three sharps to the key signature, add, um, take away three flats. So now what we do is we come here and we say a sixth, major sixth above A flat is F right there. And then there's your D, which is the tonic for this key, the transpose key, but it sounds like the F right there. And we can just keep going. So the C right there, the stems up will be right there. And then we go back up to the F, which is the D and then up again. And then as we go over the next measure, the A flat, Oops, I guess I should use the right. And C becomes A flat. Um, we'll just leave it right there. Okay. Now, I want to talk about tenor sax and berry sax. Um, Maybe we'll start with berry sax. This is an E flat berry sax, baritone sax. And the difference between alto sax and baritone sax is that, you know, it's, it's like twice as big. In fact, it plays an octave lower. So we're going to take this bass line right here, the low F, and then up to the C in this here. And we're going to put it down here in the berry sax line. You'll notice that the berry sax is playing in treble clef. So this is an interesting notation conundrum. Uh, let me explain first off that alto saxes, tenor saxes, and berry saxes, and even soprano saxes that are higher than this, um, they're all keyed the same way, meaning that a saxophone player will learn to hold down certain keys to get a certain note. Now, because the instruments are different sizes, they come out sounding different. But for ease of the player, they learn to read a C looks like this on the instrument, a B flat looks like this on the instrument. It's always looks the same on the page and is keyed or played the same way. But then it comes out at different pitches depending on the transposition of the instrument. Otherwise, the saxophonist has to learn how to play, you know, when they learn to play all these different saxophones, they have to learn to read the same note being keyed or fingers down in different ways and that's not very convenient. Same thing for trumpets and things, right? We have trumpets in different, different transpositions, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, F. Uh, they're used for different styles of music and a lot of solo music and things like that, orchestral music. Uh, we learn to push our fingers down in the same way and, and feel it in the same location on the instrument with our lips in air. Um, but, uh, you know, so a C is a C is a C. It's fingered the same way, it's played the same way, but it comes out differently because of the size of the horn. That's what's happening here. So berry saxes are low instruments. They, they play bass notes, but we don't want to have the saxophone struggle to learn how to read in treble and bass clef. So they make it look the same. The difference is in addition to this, because it's an E flat instrument like the alto, taking the note up a major sixth to make it sound the same pitch, you also have to change an octave as well. In other words, it's a E flat instrument plus an octave. Okay. So what that means is now I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take um, this right here and I'm going to do something called exploding the music. So you can see what happens here. So I'm going to put it into one staff. I'm going to go from the bottom up and I'm going to discard the extra notes. Basically, and I'm going to put it in the berry sax. Basically, all this is doing is it's going to copy this lowest line right here down there. And it'll get rid of these other notes. And it'll show you what happened here. Okay. So let's have a look at this right now. We're in treble clef. We're in D minor. And we have a D, D, and A. Remember that we were in the key of F major. So F was do, right? And there's my do or F right there and do tonic note, and then go up to the dominant, which is the fifth note right there. And in the key of D minor, D would be do, do, and then so, or the fifth, right? Dominant note would be right there. So it's equivalent. Basically what happens is this note will sound 
down to the F plus another octave down. Okay, so it's a E flat instrument plus an octave. And that makes sense, right? So if I have my D right here, right? Then I go down a sixth, it will go to the F right there, plus another octave will be right there. Or if I want them to play this note, I take it up an octave and then I go up a sixth, which is what we end up right there with, okay? So certain instruments are not only transposing instruments, but octave transposing instruments as well. That is true for tenor sax. Tenor sax is a B flat instrument, meaning when it sees a C, it sounds like a B flat right there, okay? But, so a whole step, just like the trumpet, okay? But it is also a lower instrument, it's a tenor instrument. And so it's C sounds like the B flat, but also an octave down. So in order to get these pitches right here, the C line and the F going to the G line in the correct place here, I have to take these notes up an octave and then up the whole step for the B flat transposition. Okay, let's think about what that is and not have the computer do that for us this time. So if I want this top tenor one line right here to go with tenor sax right here, then I have to say, okay, this C needs to go up an octave. So not middle C, but, um, so it was this C, we've done a cleft change, but it's still middle C. So I go up an octave and then I have to account for the B flat transposition, which is to go up another step. So there's my note right there. Again, this note here will sound like a C down an octave. So you got your B flat one whole step transposition going on plus an octave. And this allows the tenor sax to read in treble clef, finger the notes the same as they would on any other instrument that's a saxophone, but it comes out in the right place um, here for lower instruments right there. And you can hear when I played that, it's a low note. It's not really high note. It's not like I was singing this, right? So let's take a look at here, F, F, G. Again, I'm going to the tenor two line right here. So this note right here, F would be down here. I'll, I'll actually write it in. This F that I want in the tenor line would be not this F, but one, two, D, C, B flat, A, G, F. It would look like, oops, it would look like that right there, okay? Sounds too low. In fact, see how it's yellow there? The software's telling me you can't play that low, okay? Because it's thinking transposition, but it's not really that note. That's the note that is this note right here. But to make it sound right, we take this up an octave, and then we go up one more step, whole step, because it is a B flat transposing instrument. So this plays an F, you write a G, but you also take it up an octave. So, bum, 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 oops, bum, and then bum, and then up to, once you start going like this, you can just start doing, you know, transposition. Right? And then this guy right here, well, alto sax. It's got to go up a sixth from there, if you remember. Key signature's already changed, and I'm doing the stems down red lines. So A flat will become an F. And you say, well, how do I get fast at that? Well, you get fast at it by doing it a lot. Also, you can start to, um, Think about inverting your interval. So if I want to go up a sixth from the A, it's like going down a third for the pitch. Of course, we still have to go up the octave like that. Now, I just want to talk about this note right here. It's a natural because it's harmonic minor F scale, which raises the seventh note E flat up to E, and I'm canceling out the E flat in, the, in there. And that gives us our nice dominant chord that has a good you know, meaty sound that has T tone and wants to pull us back to the one chord. Um, you have to think of this as not a natural note, but what did the natural do? It raised it. So as I come down from here and I go from E up to the C for this note right here, 
I have to think, well, that note needs to be raised because this was altered or raised as well. And currently C is just C natural in the key. So I'm gonna put a sharp right there, right? And then as I go on and do the rest of these, I have to remember to sharp that one too. And then down to there. And remember that in this notation, this natural right here will hold over and affect all the other E's until the bar line. So this E is also natural. Finale doesn't know that in my case. So I, I'm gonna have to put, it cancels it. I have to put that back in. But you don't have to write another sharp if you're doing handwritten there because the rule is that sharp holds over. And, uh, right? And then I'll just finish, I think, this part off. Now, if you're saying, wouldn't it be great to have software? Yeah, I guess it's actually slower. It's just cleaner. Then you can go back and make edits, right? And, uh, and so on. Now I'm gonna show you something really cool that the software can do. I can uh, cheat. I'm gonna take all these notes right here and select them. I'm going to tell my software to explode the music. I want it exploded into three different staffs because there's three notes. And I'm going to go from the top down. So the first staff will get the top note, next staff will get the next note and so on. And I want it to start on tenor sax one. So it's gonna take each of these notes and copy them down here like that. And it'll take care of the transposition for me too, because it's reading it the same way because it's thinking about all that. And there we go. And I think to be correct, I also need to have, you know, uh, rests here. Because these guys should know that they don't play on beat one. And that, the, that uh, sorry, on the pickup beat four or two and actually, because we're in cut time, that they need to know how long that is. And this is what this sounds like. <laughs> so on okay and that's it and so for wednesday you want to do this as well and i'll put the answers up for you to see but remember when something is a transposing instrument and and the score doesn't say here but e flat alto sax b flat tenor e flat sax it means that when it sees and plays a c sounds like whatever note it's named for down below when you want to write for this instrument, then you take whatever is at the piano or at concert pitch and move it back in the same direction or in the opposite direction, that interval. E flat instruments is basically up a major sixth. You gotta change the key signature as well. Tenor saxes and very saxes also transpose an octave. So that, that allows them to play in treble clef so that they can always finger the notes in the same way and read the notes in the same way that they're used to. Also, when you have an accidental breaking the key signature, you have to ask yourself, what is the net effect here? This natural cancels a flat, so it raises the note. So when I get that equivalent note right here, I have to say this C is natural, so I'm going to have to raise this note by putting a sharp on right there. Here, remember, sharp lasts through the whole measure, so this is actually C sharp and a C sharp, which is a concert e4 okay so you can do the rest of this and have fun with it i will put answer keys up because you should get confirmation that you're doing it right